Hey, welcome, or oh, welcome back, to 4F Beauty. When will I be cheap famous? I don't know. Probably never. But what I do know is this is now the third, if I put this up in the right order, of my films um, in my series of What If They Were Good? And as you will have seen from the thumbnail, the title, and if you've read it, the description, and I mean the hair's a dead giveaway anyway, isn't it really? This is my interpretation of how the dastardly Cruella de Vil would look were she a Disney princess. She'd be a sassy princess, so she'd be having the short hair, you know this, you know she'd be having the short hair and the sports car. And she would probably make the prince's lives an absolute misery. Running them round ragged. Because you know she's going to be the girl in charge. So, if you want to see exactly how I created this look, then my friend, you are in precisely the right place. Put your feet up. Here it comes. Hey, welcome back from the intro. Okay, this is another one in my series of what if they were good? I've told you in the first couple of episodes um, how this started, but basically it was a pain somnia moment and I was wondering why the villains always had the better makeup and the better costumes. Which then led on to, what if they were, what if, what, if, what if the villains were actually good? What if they were the Disney princesses? What would their makeup look like? And so this series was born. Now, I'm only doing five initially, just testing the water to see how it goes. If it goes down well, I may chuck a few more in as we go. Um, let me know. Let me know if there's someone that you want me to turn good or turn into a Disney princess. Um, it doesn't have to be a female character either because I have already done Hades and turned him into a princess. <laughs> so um, this is still a teaching channel though so I am still going to be going reasonably slowly with my blending that's also because of my chronic pain um, but I want beginners to be able to follow easily so if you're more of an expert, there's a speed widget up there somewhere. Just speed me up, I don't mind. There's times I have to do it. I go through in the morning and, you know, mark all the ones that I want to watch for the day, put it into watch later, and think, crikey, I'm never going to get through all of those. So I end up watching it at like one and a half speed or something, just so that I can watch them all. So, you know, the speed widget is there for a reason. You know, use it, it's great. Right, let's get you zoomed in a minute. I just want to talk to you about eye shapes. I will have chucked a picture of Cruella over here somewhere. Because I'm not sure I've said that yet. I would have told you in the intro, but I don't think I've said that I'm doing Cruella today. Bring me the puppies. Right. <laughs> she is such a heinous creature, isn't she? I still think in the movie it should have been Joanna Lumley playing her. She would have absolutely smashed that part. Anyway, yeah, I'm going close to it. Okay, jump. Now, I've got what is known as deep set eyes. I've recently heard them called double lidded eyes, but most people refer to them as deep set eyes. I get the same issues that people with hooded lids get in that I get transference of colours from here up onto the upper lid. If I'm cutting my crease, I can't just cut the socket, I have to go onto the upper lid. And when I'm wearing glitter, even with glitter glue, I get a bare patch through here. Now, a lot of people with deep set eyes mistakenly believe or are mistakenly told they have hooded lids. Now, you can follow any tutorial if you've got deep set eyes or if you've got hooded lids. You just need to know the workaround, but the workaround for the types of eyes is very different. So I'm just going to talk you through how to work out whether you've got deep set eyes or whether you've got hooded lids and then I'll explain the workarounds for you. 
Now, with my brows relaxed and looking straight forward, you can see all of my mobile lid from inner to outer corner. So I haven't got hooded lids. It's only if your static lid completely covers right down to your lash line, part or all of your mobile lid, that you have a full or a half hooded lid or what's known as a mono or an Asian eye. I'll demonstrate deep set eyes with this eye because this is the one that I'm blind in so I can close this one and make sure A I'm still on screen and B that I'm still in focus. So my brows relaxed. If I cover the visible mobile lid and then close my eye, you can see I've got as much lid space again that tucks back away, if not more actually. And if I roll it up onto the static lid and do the same thing, you can see I've got lid space there that tucks back away as well. And it's those two parts of the lid rubbing together that gives me the same issues. But you can see it is two very different types of eye. Now, if you have hooded lids, get something like this or a pencil brush. And on your static lid, just sketch out where you need your new crease to fall. Obviously that's going to reduce the space to increase in brow. So just use slightly smaller blending brushes and... If I'm not doing an editorial look, I'll normally leave a gap between the colour and the brow. You may find if you've got very little space here, you may need to take the colour right up to the brow. That's not an issue. If you have deep set eyes, like I've got, what we have to do is when we're blending a colour through our crease, we stop, sit back, relax our brows and just check we've brought it up high enough that we can see it when our brows are open. So you can see that's two very different ways two very different workarounds, that's why it's important to know whether you've got hooded or deep set eyes. Right. Uh, now Cruella has a gorgeous green eyeshadow and I haven't used this one yet, the Layla 2 from Blush Tribe, but it's um, pretty damn perfect. So I'm going to go in with this. I'm going to start off with Let's start off with Maria, which is the very, the, the very pastel, um, quite citrusy green actually, as you can see. Um, I'm going in with a Royal and Lanical Chic Pro Crease Brush, basically it's a round blending brush. Um, Face is Wash Moisturised SPF and Primed. This is the eye primer that I use, I don't use anything else but this now. Ever since I tried it, it's fantastic. It goes on dry, it's not sticky, you don't have to set it, but you can blend on it straight away. We've got six different colours. The white that I've used, I literally just use, I keep a specific brush and I just twirl that in the primer and then just run it across my eye because nails. Um, They've got white, the, deep, the deepest end they've got a chocolate brown and a black and then three skin tones in between. Um, I do have a discount code, it is listed below, I don't earn from it, it's listed with all my other discount codes. Right, I'm going to start off by popping this up the top here. And you can see I'm doing circular movements in this direction going towards the nose. And then I'm going to reverse the direction to come back out again. And I'm not putting very much pressure on the eye at all. I want to build this colour up very softly because it is a pastel so I don't want it to go too heavy with it. I'm holding the brush right at the end so I put as little pressure as possible on my eye. But by doing these little circular movements what you're doing is gently moving the skin on your eyelids around so that you shouldn't get any of the white sort of barcoding or tiger striping which is a dead giveaway that you're getting older. Although, having lost 14 stone recently, I say recently, over the last few years, um, that's made the skin on my eyelids a bit looser as well. Um, I do have very deep creasing here from when my eye was pulled around at the ophthalmic hospital. As you can see, it's the only part of my primer that ever creases, it's just there. Um, so I do sometimes have to stretch that lid out depending on um, the shadow that I'm using, some shadows will will blend okay like this, others need me just to pull the lid out a little bit and certainly shimmers need to be um, have the lid pulled taut 
but do not do that with your lids if the circular movement works because otherwise you will end up with a deep crease there and I promise you, you won't like it I've been watching Strictly Come Dancing which is the, um, the British forerunner of the American Dancing with the Stars I used to remember watching Come Dancing as a kid with my mum and loving it when they got to the Viennese waltz because they all had the ostrich feather um, bases to their dresses. And this blending is kind of the Viennese waltz of makeup. You have natural turns, you have reverse turns and you've got a little bit of a fleckle in the middle there. So, as I said, I'm just building this up very, very softly. I really just want it very, very... I'm just going to sit back and check that the shades look the same, which they do. The other issue is obviously I don't Photoshop or use filters or anything on my work. Uh, unlike James Charles, who Photoshops and flips it over. So my eyes are not symmetrical, so sometimes I have to do a slightly different shape one side to the other to make them look the same, and that's absolutely fine. Right. Still using the same brush. I'm not going to clean it off because I'm just going to go in with more greens, getting deeper and deeper, so I don't need to. I'm going to go in with uh, Bia or Bia, B-I-A. Oh, there's one here that's got the same name as my sister-in-law. I'm going to have to use that one. Ooh, this is a pretty one. And I'm just blending this a little bit lower down than that first pastel that we put on. And you can see that's that's really blending beautifully together. No problems at all getting that to blend. Ooh. I do like Blush Tribe stuff. I know some people are calling them the Morphe of the, um, the indie world because they've got so many people that have got um, discount codes. I've got a discount code with them. The difference being, I've been using their stuff for probably a year before I got the discount code and I'm not on a PR list every single Blush Tribe palette and pigment that I've bought i bought myself and I'm, you know, I'm disabled, my money is very very tight I would not repeatedly buy from the same company if the products were crap discount code or no, because I don't earn from the Blush Tribe discount code it's just a benefit for you if you want to use it. This is beautiful. In fact, my absolute favourite palette ever, which I think she's about to do a pre-order for because it's been out of stock forever, um, is the Hasina 2, which is purple, green and blue. My three favourite colours, which is perfect. Right, now I'm going to go in with the shade, which is the same name as my sister-in-law which is Sarah. I'm going to run that a little bit further down. That's a beautiful rich green, look at that. Really stunning. Just going to really flare this outside edge out a bit. Really soften it. If you find, because I do get dry patches here and here, if you find that the pigment is starting to wear away, just pat it on and then blend. If you've got you know, specific dry patches that are reacting like that. Then you see when I relax my brow, you can see, you can just see it peeping up over the top there, which is great. You will eventually get to the stage that you'll know your own eye and even if you've got hooded lids, you won't need to sketch out where you need your crease to be because you'll you'll instinctively know where your crease will fall when you've moved it. So, yes, I've done two of these before. I've done Ursula and I've done Hades. Um, as I said, I'm going to try and get pain permitting. I'm going to try and get five films up this week. I'm running really behind with my films at the moment. Um, had uh, a couple of 
couple of mates whose worlds were imploding that needed help. Uh, one of them sadly no longer a friend. Long story, not one I intend to go into here. Um, but because that, rather than... Normally my films are done at least one or two weeks before they need to be uploaded. And at the moment I'm really running behind. Um, I mean literally this is Tuesday and I'm, this is going to be Thursday's look. And I still need to edit it, put all the images in, get it exported, get it uploaded, get all the tags done. So, pain permitting, I'm going to try and get five done this week if I can. Because um, this is kind of my, I've, I've got a couple of Halloween things on my channel. You know, traditional Halloween type looks. I've got Broken Doll, I did the, uh, the zombie punk beauty guru. With rotting flesh with glitter inside it. <laughs> Gotta be seen to be believed. Um, and I've done a Scary Scarecrow. Uh, there is another collab that I'm hopefully going to have time to film for as well, which will be coming up on the 28th. So fingers crossed I'll have a look there. And I also bought the Oh My Glitter OMG. Halloween mystery box so I've got their palette that I want to use for the look that I put up on actual Halloween um, but yeah I've got a lot a lot a lot a lot a lot a lot, a lot, a lot of catching up to do um, so I'm going to try and get as much filming done this week as I can really as my pain will let me <laughs> The other day I was filming at right, half eleven at night because I just couldn't sleep and I thought I might as well do something productive all the time so I got up and I was filming. <laughs> I know, I'm crazy. It's one of the problems of living with chronic pain though. You, uh, you never know until the day starts how many spoons you're going to have to survive with. Right, I'm just going to clean this brush off, and then I'm going to go in with one of the darker greens just to deepen up this outside edge. I don't want to make it too dark because obviously she's a princess. That was very gay. Very camp, I should say, not very gay. Before anybody accuses me of being prejudiced, get over yourself, please. I think I know more gay women and men and trans women and men than I do straight ones, to be quite honest. Right, I've got um, an e.l.f. eye blending brush here, which is slightly more, slightly smaller, but still, it's still, it's still a blender, but it's not as blown out. Um, and I think I'll go in with Maryam. Just to deepen up the outer edge here, just a fraction. And then just pop this. Oh, I can't see a thing, I'm relying on muscle memory. I really hope I'm in screen and in focus. Yeah, look at that. So, literally just on that outer edge, just just to give it a little bit of extra definition. Beauty with this eye, of course, with being blind in it, I can actually close it so you can see what I'm doing a little bit easier. I have got on the list to do a story time of why I'm blind in that eye. Um, but as I said, I'm so behind with so many. I've got so many palettes over here that I need to film with that I haven't filmed with yet. Because um, part of my benefit goes towards me having a car. And every three years you take it back and get a new one. 
so that you've always got a reliable car. Um, and if you take it back in good condition, you get a good condition bonus. And that arrived, and I took me and hubby out for a meal, and then spent the rest of it on makeup. <coughs> This is just a pad with some micellar water on and I'm just tidying up the edges a little bit. This is why I did my eyes first, so that you can you can have that and if you do get um, a pigment or a, a shadow that's got a fallout with it, it doesn't matter. Alright, let me grab one of my Jeffrey brush -outs. This is one of the Jeffrey Morphe. It's actually one of his lip brushes. It's JS24. But I like it because you can get right into the corner there. Now I'm going to go in with... Which one of the shimmers do I want to use? That's a very good question. Probably the lightest of the three, which I can't remember which one that was now. Was it that one? Was it that one? No, it was that one. Honestly. <clears throat> Never go into a pressed pigment with a wet brush. So I always go in and I load the brush up first. Like so. And then I'll spray the brush. Uh, I'm using a fixing spray. You can use any spray. You can use a moisturising spray like Mario Badescu or MAC Fix Plus. You can use setting spray, priming spray, finishing spray. You can even just use clean water in an empty spray bottle. Which obviously wouldn't be empty if you put water in it. You know what I mean. Um, I've got a little mirror here that I'm looking down into so that you can see what I'm doing. I'm just going to run this. Can you see what I mean about how great that is for getting all right into that corner there? I'm just going to run that over the two thirds of the lid. Up until now, didn't have any pigment on it. Now, yes, I could cut the crease if I wanted to, but I like to see how much opacity the pigment has. is quite good actually. For a lighter pigment, <clears throat> it's covered quite well. Right, dry the brush off and then I shall repeat with the other eye. So load the brush up. This is a great way by the way if you've got um, a setting spray that you don't like that makes your eyes run or whatever. This is great for um, great way of, of using it and not wasting your money is just use it to wet pigments obviously if it makes your eyes run be careful um, I do have to stretch this lid out when I'm doing shimmer pigments though otherwise what happens is the pigments build up but loosely in those deep creases rather than being blended on as they are now and then throughout the day as I move my eye, they end up cascading down my face. Not good. And then again, just use the tip of the brush just to buff the edge there. That's really pretty. Right, I am going to pause you while I pop some foundation and base products on etc. And I will be back to finish off this eye look with you. So uh, you don't have to wait at all because you're going to see me instantly. I, however, will see you the very next time that I press the record button. Hello! As you can see, I decided to go for green brows because, well... I've got a green pomade now, so why not? This is the <clears throat> it's the ColourPop Teaspoon Gel Liner. Um, because for some reason, 
Revolution, when they did their pomage, didn't seem to have a green one anyway. And they, they seem to have sold out, and they don't seem to have restocked. Now, I don't know whether it's because that was a seasonal thing and it didn't sell well and they're just not going to replace them, or whether they're changing the packaging or whether they're bringing out different colours for autumn, winter. I don't know what's going on. Um, <clears throat> but, uh, yeah, I have used the gel liner instead on my brows. Always use things that, you know, it, you don't have to use a brush for what it's meant for. I mean, you've seen me use a lip brush on my eyes already. <clears throat> right, back into Layla 2. And I'm going to grab my flat top brush that I showed you earlier. And I'm going to go into Nayla, which is a really lovely olivey green. And I'm just going to, very similar to my eyeshade actually. Just going to run that along the lower lash line. I love these flat top brushes for getting up under your lashes. They really are great. Yes, I'm flinching that side. I'm blinding that eye. I don't have any peripheral vision, so I'm relying very much on muscle memory and a viewfinder that's quite a long way off and I haven't got my glasses on or a contact lens in. Do not actually poke myself in the eye, and regular viewers will know poking myself in the eye actually happens on a very regular basis. Right, the next brush I'm going to go in with is the brush from the Tarte Graveyard Girl palette, but I love it because it's flat topped again, but it's chunky, so it's really great for smudging out. If you don't have this, you can use a smudger brush or you can use a densely packed brush like this. And I'm going to go into I think I'll go into Imam which is like a yellowy green because I think that will blend nicely with the olive yeah that works nicely the other colours would have clashed with it I think because they yes that looks nice I like that I'm really, I know this isn't a palette review but oh my goodness I'm loving this palette I cannot wait to use this <clears throat> in conjunction with my Oh My Glitter OMG Get Sprung palette because that's all greens and yellows but it's all satins and shimmers and those two together are going to produce some pretty damn amazing looks and I cannot wait to get on with some of those right now talking of brushes that are not used for what they originally intended this is a lip brush that I bought off of uh, eBay I think probably 10 years ago now uh, and I'm going in with the House of Sparkles Fallen Angel highlighter. I'm just going to run that along the tail of the brow there. Popping something like this underneath the tail of the brow. You don't have to use a shimmer. You can use a, um, a pale matte shade if you prefer. It just helps to give the eyes a bit of a raised, the eyebrows a bit of a higher look <clears throat> which is more youthful and helps to open the eye up and again with opening the eye up because it can be quite dark in this inner corner I always like to add a bit of highlight and then just run it down underneath the tear duct just to meet <clears throat> the colour that I've got, I've got a real frog in my throat today sorry just to meet the colour that I've got running underneath Yay! Right, one last time for you to be paused while I lob this all over my face. Chuck some uh, some mascara on, some lippy. Do something with my hair. If you've watched the first two, you know what I'm going to be doing with my hair. And I will be back right now. I am back. I feel like a cross between Emma Thurman and Kill Bill, not Kill Bill, Reservoir Dogs. 
Sia and a 1960s songstress. But this is my take on what a Cruella darling would look like. The only problem with cheap wigs is they do shed a lot the first few times you wear them. Sorry about that. Yes, this is my uh, my interpretation of exactly how Cruella would look if she were a Disney princess. I mean, clearly the woman has style. She's not going to be a Disney princess with long hair. She's going for the bob. Actually, I quite like this look on myself, to be quite honest. So, darling, I only wear fake fur. I'm a modern princess. Right, <clears throat> if you are one of my 4F babies, please double check you're still subscribed because I got notified yesterday that I had three new people following me. And then when I checked my total numbers, I'd lost two. So effectively, I've lost five people in one day. Gained three new ones, but there's five older people that have been completely wiped off the list. Um, it's really frustrating, it's really demoralising, but um, I appreciate every single one of you. And all the while you are still enjoying my films, I'll continue to pump them out for you. The lipstick, by the way, is Jeffrey Redrum. The mascara is the Essence Lash Princess Full Slash Effect, the green one, because green, it, it felt appropriate. I know the mascara itself is black, but the packaging had green on it, and I felt drawn to it. What can I say? Yes, once you've double checked, you are still subscribed, um, and that if you've if you'd rung the notification bell, just check that you've still got all the steps because they've added yet another step to it as well as ringing the bell and choosing all notifications. I think there's now a third step you have to click as well. You know, gone are the days when, oh, I like that channel, I like it, and YouTube will tell me when they put videos up. No. No, not anymore. If, however, <laughs> I have got loose hairs from this and it's really tickling my face and I apologise if it's fidgeting you but it's fidgeting me. Gotcha. Problem is of course being blind this side I can't see the damn things. I kind of have to go for where it feels and I hope I don't poke myself in the eye. Um, <laughs> if this is your first visit here. Hi, I'm not always this mad. Uh, sometimes I'm worse. Sometimes I'm better. But sometimes I'm worse. If you've made it this far through, I'm guessing you must have liked just a little bit of it. So it would be awesome if you too would like to join the beautiful 4F family, which you can do by... Oh, I beg your pardon, I had a sip of drink. Which you can do by hitting that subscribe button, which is the colour of my lipstick right now, and turning it Hades Grey. Um, and again, you know, jump through all of the flaming hoops that YouTube want you to jump through if you want to get notifications. Uh, I've got an awful lot of other videos that you can go back and watch. Uh, there's two previous ones in this series, if this is the third one that I put up, which I think it most likely will be. Um, and hopefully there will be two more of them later on in this week. Um, as I said, I've got traditional Halloween looks as well. Um, so it's entirely up to you. You can just pick a playlist, put your feet up, get comfy with a drink and a snack, and just indulge. Right. All oh, that remains for me to say, as ever, darlings, is you'll stay fabulous. And I'll see you next time. Bye for now.